Now, let's talk about how cerebral infarctions form and how our body's unusual manifestations can serve as warnings. The fundamental concept of a cerebral infarction is when a blood clot obstructs a blood vessel in the brain, causing a bulge at the site of the blockage. This bulge puts pressure on the neurons inside our brain. As a result, our brain can't properly control our body's normal functions. For instance, if the clot compresses the area responsible for our vision, we might experience unclear or misaligned vision. This is why many cerebral infarction patients exhibit an uneven gait after treatment as their vision is affected. Conditions like vitiligo and Alzheimer's disease can also result from cerebral infarctions, depending on the location of the clot. Vitiligo occurs when neurons controlling skin color are compressed, while Alzheimer's occurs when the central nervous system is affected, leading to overall brain oxygen deprivation. Cerebral vascular obstruction, or cerebral infarction, uh, occurs when a clot forms within the cranial blood vessels, pressing against neurons that control movement in the right side of our body. This results in the symptoms of hemiplegia, where one side of the body becomes paralyzed. During face-to-face -face examinations, we primarily inspect the tongue for signs of cerebral infarction. A stiff, immovable tongue or severe deviation indicates the presence of a cerebral infarction. A leftward deviation suggests a vascular blockage on the right side of the brain, while a rightward deviation indicates blockage on the left side. If the tongue appears enlarged, stiff, swollen, and is difficult to lift. It suggests blockages on both sides of the brain. So, how do cerebral infarctions form? They typically result from abnormal dietary habits and lifestyle choices, such as overeating, staying up late, and excessive alcohol consumption. These behaviors disrupt our metabolism and hinder the timely breakdown of nutrients in our bloodstream, leading to the formation of blood clots. Blood clots easily get trapped in the narrow blood vessels of the brain. <laughs> Stronger individuals are more susceptible to cerebral hemorrhage because when a blood vessel is blocked, the heart continues to exert pressure to push blood through. If the clot is too large to pass through, the high pressure can rupture blood vessels, causing cerebral hemorrhage. In cases of weakened heart function, this can lead to conditions like Alzheimer's, hemiplegia, language impairment, blurred vision, and vitiligo. Now, let's explore how cerebral infarctions progress. In the early stages of a cerebral infarction, one may experience dizziness, a sense of fullness in the head, or discomfort in the neck. These symptoms indicate that a cerebral blood vessel is starting to become blocked, resulting in reduced blood supply to the brain. If fingers and toes suddenly feel numb, tingly, or painful, and movements become less responsive, it could be due to insufficient blood supply to the brain, impairing the brain's control over our limbs and circulation. If you notice your tongue becoming wider, larger, and harder, and your speech and articulation declining, it suggests that the extent of the cerebral infarction is expanding. If you accidentally bite your tongue three times within a week, you are highly likely to experience symptoms of a cerebral infarction. In conclusion, through years of practice and observation, we have found that sublingual bloodletting is an excellent preventive measure against the occurrence of cerebral infarctions.